Welcome back to the Two Guys at a Cooler channel. Today we're going to be making Chinese rice beer or Chinese rice wine. It's really easy to make. And all you need is some Shanghai yeast balls. That's what that's called. And I'll put a link in the description box below if you want to get your hands on some. Basically, it's a combination of yeast and koji with probably some other stuff that I don't know because I can't read Chinese. You're going to want to get an airlock, something to ferment your rice, and then you're going to need some sweet, glutinous rice. And that's it. And let me show you what I did. And I kind of did it two ways. I steamed it and then I boiled it to see which one would work out better. And I'll show you the results here at the end of both of those. But basically, either way you do it, you want to wash your rice really well. And you want to wash it until the water runs clear. And so this process sometimes takes a while. Now my rice has been completely washed. And I have it set to the side. I'm going to go ahead and crunch up these Shanghai yeast balls. Now, you, you need something to convert the starch into sugar. Otherwise, it just doesn't work. You can't just add like brewer's yeast or uh, or bread yeast. Something has to convert it. And that's what that mold is for. So once I have that into a powder, I'm gonna set that to the side because we're gonna use that when we finish cooking the rice. First, I wanna make sure that I sterilize my equipment. So in a pot of boiling water, I've got my cheesecloth and my pickle jar and my lid and all that stuff. And now we're gonna go ahead and steam it. So this is the first way that I did it. All I did was I rinsed and washed. I'm gonna steam it for about 45 minutes. After 45 minutes, I'm gonna take it out of the steamer and let it cool. I want it to get under 100 degrees Fahrenheit, and then I'm gonna sprinkle some of that koji yeast all over it. And once I have it mixed in really well, make sure that you're working in a clean environment, I'm gonna go ahead and put that into my pickle jar. And it's a cleaned pickle jar, sanitized and ready to go. I'll have my airlock on top, I'm filling it up with water, and pretty quick after I filled it up with water, it started to show signs of life, which I thought was kind of neat, and that's what that looked like. So the other way that I did it was I, I boiled the rice. So first way was steaming it, this way is boiling it, and I did the exact same thing, with the exception of in this way, I let it soak for about four hours. And so now we're gonna go ahead and put this into the vessel with the koji powder, just like before, with that Shanghai yeast balls, and I'm gonna go ahead and cover it up, put the lock on it, and at this point it's a waiting game. So seven days later, here's what I noticed. The one on the left that was steamed, the one on the right was boiled, and you can already see signs of separation with the water and the rice. Now, I haven't added any water to either one of these, and this is what we're looking at four weeks later, okay? So now we're one month. It's been sitting on my countertop. It's 75 degrees Fahrenheit, and the one on the left, that was the one that I boiled. The one on the right, that's the one that I steamed, and you can definitely see that the one on the left has already started to show a lot of signs of separation, the fermentation, whereas the one on the right is covered in a white mold, but there's really not a lot of separation. So it makes me think that that soaking process is pretty critical when it comes to using this kind of rice. You can't just wash it and then steam it. You have to wash it and then you have to soak it so that it softens the outer shell. Okay, so that was definitely a cool lesson learned. So what we're gonna do is now we're gonna go ahead and take the one that was successful, um, and we're gonna run it through a cheesecloth and just go ahead and strain it completely out. At this point, I wanna remove the solids from the liquids. It has a really nice nutty type smell. Um, I did taste it and there's a, a really delicate sweetness that comes into it. I mean, it does taste like a home brew if you've ever done anything like that. But once I've strained it and ran it through the cheesecloth, I went ahead and poured it back into my container. And then I just added a little bit of bentonite clay so that I can clarify it a little bit. It's, this step's not really necessary. You could drink it as is, but sometimes for a presentation, people wanna you know, clear it up. And so there's two ways to do it. Bentonite clay is one of them. Another way is to do a, what they call a cold shock, which will happen in your fridge. In about 24 hours, that's what it'll look like. The solids will sink, sink to the bottom. And then all you gotta do is separate it. And I didn't happen to have a siphon hose, so I used like a turkey baster to separate uh, my liquids. And finally, what I want to do is pasteurize it. And all I'm going to do is put a little bit of foil, stick that in some water, bring it up to about 160 degrees for 10 minutes. And that's just going to kill off any yeast or any unwanted bacteria so it doesn't continue to ferment. And then your rice beverage is ready to drink. You can technically start drinking it the minute you see liquid. It's going to be a little more effervescent in the beginning. And then as it ferments, it's going to be a little sweeter. And sometimes people will put different fruits to flavor it. And I thought it was quite nice, quite enjoyable. I uh, am hoping to make sake. If you want to see me make traditional Japanese sake, give me a thumbs up and comment in the comment section below. Otherwise, thanks for watching this video. I really appreciate it. This is a cool experience. 
and um, I hope I was able to simplify it enough so that you can make it at home. If you do make it, give me a comment. If you are new to this channel, consider subscribing, clicking that notification bell. Don't forget to share this video. We post new videos every week on all sorts of crazy and random topics. So stick around, check out some of our past uploads. We'll see you in the next video.